These things I'm holding are sticks of RAM, short for random access memory. RAM is an essential part of every computer because it holds all of the data your computer is currently using. Think of it as your computer's short-term memory, while the hard drive is more like the long-term memory. Why is RAM important? How much RAM do you need, and how fast does it need to be? In this video, we'll answer those questions and hopefully clear up some common myths about RAM along the way. As your PC's short-term memory, RAM stores a moderate amount of information that can be accessed quickly. RAM is about 100 times faster than even the fastest SSD or hard drive, but it holds about 100 times less data, and it loses that data when your computer's power goes off. Everything currently in front of me is desktop computer RAM. As you can see, desktop RAM can come in a variety of appearances. These are pretty standard sticks with a modest heatsink. These are similar, but they're designed with a low profile, so they won't get in the way of your CPU heatsink fan. These are also low profile, but don't have heatsinks. Because there's no heatsink blocking them, you can see the individual RAM chips, which are these little black boxes. These sticks come with large, gold heatsinks that are more of an acquired taste. Since they're so tall, these heatsinks are more likely to get in the way of a CPU's heatsink fan. Like I said, these are all examples of desktop RAM, but they're also smaller sizes for laptops, and special versions for servers. For desktop RAM, the most modern type is DDR4, although the older DDR3 is still widely used. All of these sticks in front of me are DDR3. If we have DDR4 and DDR3, you might be wondering what happened to DDR2 and DDR1. You'd be correct to assume they got replaced by the DDR3 we have here. DDR3 and DDR4 are just the latest in a long history of desktop memory types. Why does the type of RAM keep changing? Why not stick with one type? Well, because part of what makes the newer types of RAM faster is they work in different ways. The need for a new motherboard, CPU, and RAM every few years is simply the price we have to pay to take advantage of faster speeds and lower power use. As you can see in this graph stretching back to 1990, we've seen the development of seven different types of desktop RAM, and over time the speed has increased significantly with each new type. Let's take a look at some of these RAM sticks so that we can talk about the fun stuff. Numbers. These are two sticks of Crucial Ballistics low voltage, low profile DDR3 RAM from one of our office computers. Each stick is four gigabytes, giving us a total of eight gigabytes in our system. They have a speed of 1600 megatransfers per second, they're designed to run on 1.35 volts instead of the standard 1.5 volts for DDR3, which decreases heat and power use a bit. These other Crucial Ballistics RAM sticks are very similar, except they're standard size and use the standard 1.5 volts. They're also 4 gigabytes each. Finally, these are also 4 gigabyte sticks of DDR3, but they run at a higher speed of 1866 megatransfers per second and a higher voltage of 1.65 volts. They also have these big heat sinks on top that only a mother could love. So, what do these numbers mean, and how important is it to get RAM with bigger numbers? First, let's discuss storage size. How much does size matter? In most cases, PC builders assume they need more gigabytes of RAM than they really do. This is a myth as old as computers, encouraged by manufacturers happy to sell more RAM and oversimplify things down to one easy number. The amount of RAM you have determines how much information your computer can access quickly. As long as you have enough RAM to do everything you need to do, having more RAM does nothing for you. Whenever you turn on your computer, applications load data into the RAM. For example, each tab you have open in your web browser takes up its own little bit of your RAM. Every program you have open or background operation you have running also takes up a little bit of RAM. As long as everything you're doing on the computer takes up less RAM than your total, you're okay. If your RAM fills up, then everything slows down significantly. This is why you may have to occasionally restart your computer to clear the junk out of your RAM and restore performance. For most people, 8 gigabytes of RAM is more than enough to work with. It's plenty for simultaneously having dozens of open tabs in Google Chrome, running the most demanding modern PC game while streaming to Twitch, and having a movie playing on a second monitor all at the same time. It actually takes quite a bit of effort to fill up 8 gigabytes, and that's the amount we recommend for a good mid-range PC. Even 4 gigabytes of RAM is enough most of the time, and we recommend that for lower-end PCs if you're looking to save a few bucks. Some PC enthusiasts will passionately insist that you need at least 16 gigabytes of RAM, but you really only need to consider getting 16 gigs or more if you have a specific use in mind. Video editing or other production work involving huge files can benefit from 16 gigs or even more 
the average PC user just doesn't need that much. If you want to get a bunch of RAM anyway, it won't hurt anything. You just might be spending more money than necessary. So once again, having more RAM than you need will not improve your computer's performance, but it also won't hurt. Next, let's talk about speed. RAM speed is roughly measured in megatransfers per second. DDR stands for double data rate. The double is because two transfers happen per clock. So a stick of DDR3 RAM running at 800 megahertz is called DDR3-1600 because it can pull off two transfers per clock cycle. It's a common mistake to just refer to DDR3-1600 as 1600 megahertz when it's really 1600 megatransfers. Now you can impress your next hot date when they start talking about RAM in megahertz. The official speeds of DDR3 RAM are 800, 1066, 1333, 1600, 1866, and 2133. Once you get to a speed of about 1600 or above, performance stops noticeably improving for most tasks. Assuming you're not doing anything especially bandwidth intensive with your computer, it's probably safe to settle on 1600 for DDR3 or about 2400 for DDR4. DDR4 RAM has introduced speeds going up to 4266 so far, but that doesn't mean you'll notice double the performance over the fastest DDR3 RAM. A recent benchmark from Anantech showed that the performance differences between PCs featuring RAM at speeds of 2166 and 3200 was 0 to 5% depending on the application. Another set of numbers you'll see associated with RAM performance are timings. Without getting into excruciating detail, timings relate to the speed of the RAM, and lower numbers mean faster RAM. They don't make enough difference to be worth spending much money on, but if you have the option between higher or lower timing numbers, choose the lower ones. The last number you'll often see in discussions of RAM is voltage. Voltage plays a much bigger factor in smaller devices like laptops and phones, but even in desktop RAM it will affect how much heat your RAM produces, and how much power it consumes. The standard voltage for DDR3 RAM is 1.5 volts, but some DDR3 sticks run at a more efficient 1.35, or a slightly more power-hungry 1.65. By comparison, the standard voltage for DDR2 was 1.8 volts, and DDR4 sets an even more efficient standard of 1.2 volts. In small devices, those extra power savings leave more power available for higher resolution screens or improved battery life. Now, I want to answer a few common questions about RAM. First, is it better to have multiple small sticks of RAM, or one bigger stick of RAM? Spreading your RAM out over two or four sticks is better than one stick, because you can get a slight performance increase by taking advantage of dual-channel mode. On average, you'll see a performance improvement of a couple percentage points when using two sticks compared to one. How about mixing different brands or speeds of RAM, is that okay? Mixing RAM rarely causes any problems. If you have different speeds, such as one stick of 1333 and one stick of 1600, all of your RAM automatically will run at the slower speed, in this case 1333. As for mixing brands, all RAM works based on shared standards, so different brands will work fine together, although again, the different sticks will run with the lowest common speeds and timings. The only mixing of RAM that won't work is trying to use completely different types, like one stick of DDR3 and one stick of DDR4 or laptop RAM with desktop RAM. How much do RAM heatsinks matter? Should you buy the RAM with the biggest, baddest heatsink? RAM heatsinks are just for aesthetics. Unless you plan to overclock your RAM, heatsinks on RAM are totally unnecessary. It's not uncommon for cheap, crappy heatsinks to actually make your RAM run a little hotter, and that's a bad thing. So why do manufacturers keep selling RAM with big heatsinks? Because we keep buying them, because they look cool, right? And that's about it. If you want to learn more about RAM or get current recommendations, check our links in the video description below. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. And if you want to learn more about PC hardware, subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching.